Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We ask as we look into your word today that you speak to every heart. By the power of your spirit, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, you can have your seat. Hallelujah. I live for Jesus. You can see from your seat. Day after day, I live for Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit I will, will obey. I live for Jesus. Day after day. What about you? I live for Jesus. Day after day. I live for Jesus. Day after day. The Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus. There's a beauty of the Christian life. Just knowing that we know Him. Knowing that we're connected to Him. There's a beauty knowing that our very being, we host divine presence. That divine presence is not something we go to. That we host Him in our being. Glory to God. You must never forget that we host Him his divine presence and it's our dream it's our, it's our, that's our dream it's our dream to be all he wants us to be but there's a song that way there's a song keep what i want to it's my dream to be the one you want me to be to be the one you want me to be let me tell you why these songs are important there are different kind of songs for different kind of reasons when we want to pray there are songs that helps us pray but there are songs of dedication there are songs of consecration there are songs of surrender it's it's a song of devotion like the one i'm singing right now do you know a choir they yeah, sing it To be, to be the one you want me to be. It's my dream. Hold on. Just imagine that word. You have business dream, but I have another dream. What is that dream? To be the one you want me to be. That's a, that's a summary of my life's dream. Whatever you don't want to give me, I don't want. It's my dream to be the one you want me to be. So let's sing it together. It's, it's my, my dream to be the one you want me to be. To be the one you want me to be. It's my dream. It's my dream to be the one to be you want me to be to be the one you want i love you so much it is my dream i love you so much every day i love you so much every day it's my dream it's my dream to be the one you want me to be to be the one you want me to be second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it's my dream oh god 
that's my dream to be the one what a lovely dream that what do you want to be all that god wants me to be praise god i said praise god that's a great dream what do you want to be all that god wants me to be praise the lord second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 the bible says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation he's a new creature now that's what we always emphasize but i want to have the next slide the bible says all things are passed away and behold all things have become what no i can't hear you all things have become what once you become born again some things need to pass away and there will be some things you used to do that you would you will stop doing and there will be some things you will start doing that you never used to do those are the signs that shows that you are a christian he says if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things have become new for example on the weekend before you will party so hard on saturday wedding you will stay in the wedding till 12 midnight 2 a.m then you don't go to church on sunday morning or you watch online once you get born again that changes that changes once you get born what, what family when you wake up in the morning what you just is to brush your mouth wear your shoes read read something through and go away look that was one when you're not born again when you get born again it changes because now you now have an heavenly father so once you wake up in the morning father i thank you glory to god father i thank you now i'm born again there's some things that will not be that way hey once we're not born again some things were okay but now you're born again those things those things are not no longer okay you know my cousin i spoke about my cousin you know my cousin when we we're younger you know over the weekend they will have he, he used to stay with us they will have all these girls come over in his room and it's a roller coaster of just rendezvous sex then he will tell him my brother by maybe by sunday evening or monday like ha ah, this weekend ah five girls came he was 24 rounds ah you know like he'll be bragging in it recently i was you know we're talking with him and he has this person that is with and i'm like ah, how is it rendezvous sex are you doing rendezvous sex are you i said no i said i'm not born again now ah, those are things i'm not even proud of and, I, and the reason why he's not proud of is that if any man be in christ is a new creation all things are passed away the whole all things have become new i mean there's a time you will go to quick knocks and be like we blew five million that was in the past you can't be doing that right now your, your money now should be in the gospel not in Quinox. Yes. praise god Hallelujah. i said praise god Hallelujah. i said praise god Hallelujah. so the bible says if you're in christ all things have passed away he said behold all things have become new now look at the next line no, 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 not the next line another scripture philippians 2 verse 5 which is very powerful and i'm going to call mrs irj to come forward philippians 2 verse 5 so Philippians 2 verse 5 see what it says he says let this mind be what so what does he mean by let this mind you know I, when he says let this mind be in you the mind is not something you can touch what it means is that let this mindset be in you so what is the mindset he says when you're coming to christ there's a mindset of a christian you need to have so you're not just born again there is a mindset of a child of god that you need to have I'll give an example. Look at this. What happened to the other donuts? You you moved some? You ate it already? Oh wow. Praise God. Look at this. This is wonderful. I live for Jesus. Can you see? Can the camera see? I, I want him to really see it. Oh wow. Let, let me show you some. Look, look at this. Donut. Do you feel hungry? Praise God. Look, look at this cake. Let me give it to cut some. Wow, the cake is so soft. Look at that. So fluffy. Wow. Oh my goodness. It's just breaking. It's just... My goodness. You know the thing? Some years ago, if you want to buy me something, when I was young, I would say, buy me donuts buy me cake a bottle of coke ice cream 
there are things I will look for. But if you want to, but today there's nothing you can do to me that can make me eat things like this. I could eat it maybe once in a year, but I cannot even eat its volume. The reason why is that as I grew up, my mindset changed towards this kind of food. Do you know what I'm talking about? My mindset changed. So when I was younger, this was great food. This was how many of you? This was great food when you were younger. Hands up, please. I, I know some, some of you are still great food right now, right? Oh wow. I just wonder how old you are, Chantel. <laughs> Praise God. But, but as I began to grow, I discovered that a lot of sugar and butter and flour is not good for my body. C- come, Ayo, come. Just come and have three. I don't want you to have three. Do you eat things like this? Yeah, just come. Just come. Yeah, give her a microphone as she's coming. Yeah, just come. Can you just have three? Can you just eat three quickly? Actually, don't eat. What? Actually, don't eat all this. You don't eat this. Uh, good. Oh, you need to hold the microphone closer. Yes, I don't. Actually. You don't eat this anymore. But at the time you used to eat all of this. Yes. What changed? Well, better lifestyle. Better lifestyle. Yeah. See, what I'm saying is that there was a time she used to eat all of this before. But all of a sudden, as she grew older and wanted some different kind of results, and a mental approach towards food like this changed. What am I saying? So now she has a new mindset. So when you say delicious food, this is not what you're talking about, right? When you say great food, this is not what you're talking about, right? Exactly. So let's see what changed was that she has a new mindset. So the Bible says this: let this mind be in you. That means have another mindset different from the mindset you used to have before thank you ma before before this was you when they said prayer you felt it was punishment but it says let this mindset be in you what's the mindset of christ when they say prayer i say hallelujah that's my home that's my home those days when you come to church after five minutes of preaching you start scoring goals scoring goals looking at time looking at time but when you're watching netflix are you watching um give me one series something of the something you know vikings what Thor. game of throne you see that we one sitting and you watch eight hours but when you come to church see because you say the word of god is boring how can the word of god be boring listen now you're born again it says let this mind let this mind means allow this way of thinking allow this mindset to be inside you there were days in your life all of you young ones your biggest your biggest time was when someone would talk about your social media and you're like oh wow they talk about social media but as you grow in the things of christ the appraisal of men and the christian men mean nothing all you want is god's appraisal Praise God. So the question is this. Are you still living on old diets? Are you still having old mindsets and saying, this is food? If you see someone that is in a 65 and this is all they eat, you will feel bad for them, won't you? Because they're like, wow, this person is playing with death. <laughs> Glory to God. So the Bible is saying something. He says, let this mind. He says, let this mind. He's telling you. He said, there's a mindset you need to have. There's a way of thinking you need to have. He says, let this mind be in you. The question is this. Are you dealing with the mindset you should have done, you should have put away? You're not a Christian. All things are passed away. You should begin to think in a new way. Is this someone praying intensely? Say, ah, why is he praying intensely? Let this mind be in you. Jesus Christ prayed intensely. Sunday, Sunday morning is when I rest. Uh uh-uh. uh. That mind cannot be the mind of a believer. Let this mind, you must grow. All things are passed away. You know why it's important for the mind of God to be in you? Until you see things like Christ sees things, you'll be limited in your spiritual growth. The mind of Christ, the way he thinks, the way he sees things. 
the mind of Christ is in you, some things that were fun will stop being fun to you. Some things will be fun to you that were never fun to you. And the reason why is that you will not have a new mind. Your best days as a man cannot be you watching Arsenal and Man U and watching Chelsea and you know and Liverpool. That can be your best days. Because now you think in a different level. You have a new mindset. But the question is this, Philippians 2 verse 5. It says, let it. That means it's your duty to allow the mind to be in you. I, I was reading online about a woman. She's a deputy governor in one of the southwestern states. And she's an usher at church. And someone just did a video of her ushering just last week. I said, she, she's a deputy governor. It doesn't change anything. And I wondered, how is that even a subject of discussion? How does your position do what you self, what you do for Christ? You know, there's a mindset. Without him, I'm nothing. All I have is all he gave me. Nothing can change my relationship with him. Let this mind. You need, and I'm saying so because you need to allow the mindset to be in you. And not everybody has the mindset. Look at him and say, let the mind, let the mind of, let the mind of Christ be in you. Look at them and say, let the mind of Christ be in you. You know, it's amazing when people get engaged. On earth, we all go wild. We pose, we congratulate. In heaven, they don't even take notice of it. You know why? In heaven, they don't take notice of engagement. They take notice of soul winning. So I said, oh, wow. That's the truth. In heaven, if you get one person born again, heaven will throw a party. On earth, if you get engaged, it's to throw a party. But in heaven, no attention. You need to be conscious that, see, there are things, there are big things, there are bigger things than what I can see. Let this mind be in you. Pause in Christ Jesus. Someone says, I just finished praying for two hours. I'm so, I'm so happy with myself. And someone says, ah, is that an achievement? Oh, because the mind is not yet in you. That's why donuts still looks like food to you because you don't have the you're not health conscious yet. Let this mind be in you. You know, one thing I cannot even understand is how people sleep in church on a Sunday morning. Not sleep in church, sleep at home on a Sunday morning. Someone says it's my resting day. How can it be your resting day? Monday is not your resting day. The day of the Lord is your resting day. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Once the mind of Christ is in you, then it begins to affect what you call fulfillment. It begins to affect what we call what? Fulfillment. Because you will realize, can you help me with this home noise on this monitor? And that's just this too. You will realize that there are certain things that used to bring you fulfillment before. But now that you're in Christ, they don't begin fulfillment again. This one, this one. Thank you. Thank you. You realize some things used to bring you fulfillment before, but they don't bring you what? Fulfillment again. Because you're not in Christ. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Second Kings chapter 7. Look at him and say, let this mind be in you. That was in Christ. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 3. The Bible says this. And there were four leprous men. Let's read, I'll, I'll read verse 3, you read verse 4. The Bible says, and there were four leprous men at the entry in of the gates. And they said to one another, why sit we here until we die? Verse 4, go ahead and read. Verse 5 says, And they rose up at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the inner part of the camp, behold, there was no man there. Verse 6. (laughs) 
Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Verse 8. Verse 9, which we're going to stop at. Verse 9 says, and they said, so the background, let me give the background. The background of this, that there was famine in Israel. And the prophet of God has said, by this time tomorrow. Then all of a sudden, this four lepers said, there's famine in Israel. If we stay here, we're going to die. The enemies have food. Well, we're almost dead anyway. We're leprous people. If they give us food, we'll stay alive. And either way, we, we're going to die here. Let's take a risk. See what verse, verse 9 says. And which is very important. And they said one to another, we do not well this day a day of good tidings if we hold our peace if we tarry till the morning light and some mischief come upon us now therefore that now therefore come that we may go and tell the king you know they were saying they were saying we have experienced the goodness of god we cannot hold our peace does that sound like you hey you have expressed the love of jesus you have expressed salvation. Are you going to hold your peace? The, 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 lepers, the lepers said, he said, if we keep quiet, something terrible can happen to us. The reason I began to show up the mind of Christ is this. You need to know what the mind of Christ is because Luke chapter 19 verse 10 tells us what the mind of Christ is. Just jump there quickly. That's the scripture I want to show you. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. What is the mind of Christ? Seeing things as Christ sees them. See what the Bible says about the mission of Jesus Christ. He said, for the Son of Man is come. To what? To seek and to save the lost. He said, when Jesus Christ came, he didn't show, oh my God. You know, Jesus could have been a doctor. Jesus could have been an educationist. You know what he chose to be? Jesus chose to be a soul winner. Jesus chose to be a soul winner. And I'm saying to you because you can be a Christian and this doesn't matter to you. And it doesn't matter to you because you have not allowed that mind of Christ to be in you. You have not allowed that mind of Christ. I always tell myself, if Jesus was a soul winner, then I must be a soul winner. Look at, he put his life statement in one line. He said, the son of man has come, not to be a politician, to come to what? To seek and to save the loss if i'm a soul winner it's an opportunity it's a privilege to be like the master but the question is that how come i'm not inclined how come things like that don't motivate me how come bible stuff doesn't motivate me the reason why is that you have not allowed the mind of christ to be in you he's like this donut all of you that are older and this is a consistent thing in your diet you need to have a rethink when I was younger, this is what I used to eat. Uncle would come and say, what do you want? I said, donuts, ice cream, cake, shoot, then Coke and Fanta. But as I grew older, I allowed another mindset to what? To stay inside me. The question is that if you are now in Christ, all things will pass away. There's a new mindset you must have. Where you are concerned about what God is concerned about. He said, the son of man has come. To what? To seek. And to what? Save the loss. Let me tell you something. Have you ever asked yourself how God look at people? I can ask the lady in the choir, the yellow, the yellow, come. This lady comes from the choir. And as she comes, different opinions. Someone says, Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, that's the way man looks. What does just Christ see? Jesus sees one thing. Is she going to hell or heaven? That's it. Man will look at her and be like, is it beautiful or ugly? Is she endowed or not endowed? That's what man is seeing. Then if they want to go to another way, they'll say, is she rich or is she poor? But all that God is concerned is that is she saved or is she not saved? Why is this important? Let this mind be what in you. He said, if that's the way God looks at her, train yourself 
to look that way. The reason I'm saying so is this. When you begin to look at people the way God looks at them, it will be very different. The person you laugh with in the office is the person going to hell or going to heaven. When you look through your contacts, do you just see business associates and contractors or people to get job from? Or you're looking and you can see people that are going to heaven or going to hell. Let this mind be in you. Look at the four leopards. The four leopards said, thank you, man. The four leopards said, if we keep quiet, we know we found good thing. If we keep quiet, he said, we do not well. How can you be a Christian and your best friend is going to hell? You know, many of you here, you will say that should be. You will share your shoes. You will share your phone. You even send data. Share data. The most important thing which is the gospel you never share. Because you don't realize that it's so important. Let this mind, you, you, still, you still keep judging yourself on things that's not important. What is this? But let this mind be in you. You must allow it. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Why is it important to win souls? Why is it important to make a difference for God? Why is it important? Number one, because, because the world is blind. And I love the way the Bible says, Acts chapter 26, verse 16. Acts 20, 26, verse 16. Acts 26, verse 16. Someone say hallelujah. Yeah. Acts 26, verse 16. This is when Jesus Christ appeared to Paul. He says, but arise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. What purpose? Listen to me. You need to ask yourself, so I work in UBA. What's the purpose? So, I moved to Canada. What's the purpose? So, I got this job in Abuja. What's the purpose? Is it just about the job? There's a bigger thing. He said, for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou art seen and of the things which thou would see. The next verse. He said, but rise. He says, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom I now send thee. The next verse, look at what it says. To open their eyes. You know why? Because our world is groping in spiritual darkness. Ah. That's why you are here. Our world is groping in spiritual darkness. I wanted to watch a video. Play video one. Play video one. Please, mind. Please, just allow this video. Yeah. It might not be appropriate, but allow it. I hope it's for you. Jealousy. See what I make overnight. Eh? If you did Nigeria, 100,000 bidets. Just your time. Who say I shall not be work with? Make it go. Make it go. See money. See money. How does someone post this on social media? See, the, the influence of darkness is so strong. And we're going to keep quiet? Never! Those days when I was young, if you were a prostitute, nobody was new. And someone comes out and says, if you say prostitute doesn't need a job, you should go and kill yourself. Just see, see, it's one thing to even say, I know I'm doing the wrong thing, but I have no choice. I have no means out. That's one of that thing discussion. But it's another thing to even do it and tell your friends. It's another thing to even do it and post it on the world wide web, knowing that you'll be a mother one day and your children and grandchildren will see it. How did they come here? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness. Darkness will cover the earth so much, people will call darkness light. Yes. That's what you're seeing. Yes, That's what you're seeing. People will call darkness light. That's why when God called Paul, he said to open, to open their eyes. He said to open their eyes. But how would their eyes open if you don't talk to them? No one I said, I said, who shall I send? You know what? If she knew better, she would not say that. <laughs> because some of you are quick to judge and say, she's so irresponsible. Listen to me. You can't love and criticize at the same time. 
and that's the problem of the church we are quick to point fingers before you point fingers use a hand to lift them up see what the bible says let's read uh, let's read matthew chapter 5 verse 13 matthew chapter 5 verse 13 someone say hallelujah just imagine, eh? He say number one, let's epeme, 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 and it's all a joke. And do you know the thing? This video will motivate more people, more people to get in that industry. The question that what do you post online that motivates people to follow Jesus Christ? You post your food, you put your clothes, all these things that are racked before God. What makes a difference in what you post? Matthew chapter 5. Oh, someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Verse 13. Oh, glory to God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. See what it says. He says, You are the salt of the earth. He says, In case you've forgotten who you are, He says, You are the salt of the earth. What does that mean? Listen, what that means is this you don't need too many of us to influence the city. When you are cooking a pot of soup, do you put a large piece of soup because a pot of soup? No, it's just a pinch. God says, I just need two or three. I just need two or three in Canada. I just need two or three in Lekki. I just need three or four in Ibadan. I just need two or three in UBA office. I just need four or four in Zenith. I need it. And they can change the whole place. And that's why you need to let the mind of Christ be in you. It says, see what it says. You are the salt of the earth. The problem is not that you're not the salt. Is it? But if the salt has lost what is saltiness, that's the problem. Are you still salty? Hey. I never said, "Do you go to church?" I said, "Are you still what salty?" You, you know, have you ever eaten something that's salty before? It gives you that that sharp taste. When people come in contact with your life, you give them that sharp taste. When they come in contact with your pain, you get that sharp taste. I want to ask you, if they look at your life, can they see saltiness? And it says this. If it has lost its saltiness, because it's possible for you to lose your saltiness. And that's why you're here today. Because if we have lost our saltiness, Lord, we've lost it. Lord, you need to bring it back. Oh my God, you, we need to bring back our saltiness. We need to pray prayer that Lord anoint my eyes with eternity views so that I can see life as not just in that end here that continues from this place. And not my eyes to see with the eyes of eternity. Then the next verse, look at the next verse. Verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. Listen to me. The problem is this. It's not the darkness. It's that the light is dim. The reason why is that when the light is there, no matter how strong the darkness, people will gravitate towards the light. The light will go stronger because of the darkness. The problem is that our light has been covered. In your office, nobody even knows because your light has been covered. Now we have someone that say, baby, baby, baby. You see Christians using talisman, modern talisman, Christians googling, who can tell me my tomorrow? Looking for psychic. When you know there's no other name under heaven and earth that any man can be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. You will see girls looking for herbalists to put incision on their body to get a husband. Where we know there's no other power than the power of the Holy Ghost. But the reason why people are looking for solution, but can God send you to them? He says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are not the problem, you are the solution. Don't forget who you are. Why is it important for us to share the gospel? The reason number one is that sharing the gospel brings fulfillment. Because if I'm the light of the world, the more I share the gospel, the more fulfillment I experience. You know what I discovered? A lot of people that are very famous 
influencers rich, when you get to know them one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of them are very unfulfilled. The reason why is that fulfillment comes from giving back and pursuing purpose that is outside money and what creation. And that's why you're wondering, why do I feel so empty with everything I've been? Because you're not pursuing purpose. Look at Paul. Paul says, Paul left everything. How could Paul lift a great job, a great life to pursue preaching? Because there was a deeper thing on the inside of him. Why is it important to make a difference? The reason why is that making a difference will bring hope and set people free. Jude chapter 1. You need to read this verse in the scripture. If you've not marked in your Bible before, you need to mark this one. You need to mark this one. Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1 in verse 20. In, in Jude chapter 1 in verse 22. Can we read it together? Are you there? Yes, one to go. Let's read uh huh. Did you see what he said? He says, he says, and of some have compassion. The problem with Christian is this you cannot have compassion and judge at the same time. We are quick to judge. She has done abortion six times. We are quick to judge. That one is a is homosexual. We are, we are quick to judge all of these people. That one, hey, a shower girl. That one, the ritual money. That one, fraud. Christian, who were you without Christ? Oh, look at sin. I can't listen at sin. If not for the grace of God, what would it have been? He says, I know some have compassion. Look at them and let tears come down your eyes. You can't have compassion without paying attention. You have to pay attention. He says, I know some have compassion that girl that sleeps with the boss in the office be like huh her name is Shao, eh? Maria before you say such derogatory words be a friend honey what are you looking for why are you doing this that, that, that one that you're saying that eh? with what your husband has done to you, you should leave the marriage ah there's a reason why she's staying there honey I don't know what is in your shoes can I be your listening ear he says, on some have compassion. And of some have compassion. And of some have compassion. He says, why? Because compassion is going to help you make a difference. The next verse. The next verse. And others. <laughs> Come, my brother. He said, others save with fear. How should you save them with fear? He said, pulling them. Don't want to come. Be pulling back yourself. He said, pulling them. They don't want to come to church, but I'll go and pick them up. I'll pull them. They don't, they, they love to sleep. I will pull them up because, because, because pulling them, pulling them out of the fire, pulling them up because they don't know what they're doing. They, they, if only they can see, but pull, I'm going to pull them until I pull them, until I pull them over. And Jesus has taken over now. Who does God need you to use to pull? Do you know there are families where parents don't go to church? Let me ask you a question. What Jesus would the children know? And yet, when they fill their national forms, they say, what do you practice? Christianity. And yet, you told the child, Moses, say, who is Moses? Because daddy and mommy don't pray or read the Bible. And you try past that house, even if the parents can't come. You say, can I take your kids to church? Because you are planting a seed in their heart that will change them forever. Do you know that teenage suicide in Nigeria is on the rise? Teenage suicide is on the rise. And it says, on some have compassion, making a difference. He said, pulling them. He said, pulling them. He didn't say talking. He says, we must go more than talking. We must, we must grab them and, and pull them and say, you know what? You can go to hell. I'm going to hold you. You can, you can go to hell. I'm sorry. You can go to hell. You may say I'm intrusive, but I'm sorry. I want to make sure you come to Calvary. He said, there's some pulling them out of the fire. And they said, pulling them. They're spreading, you know, I have friends that when I'm trying to win souls, they use all these dirty words and say all this nasty thing. And as I'm doing that, I'm hating even the garments. 
spotted by the flesh. I want you to watch this video and I'll tell you what the, what, what, what's going on in our world today. Video 2, please. You'll be surprised what goes on in the world today. Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Did you know that? 40% of Nigerian youths are deeply involved in drug addiction. Oh my God. And that's just statistics according to the NDLEA. Just one more hit. Just one more. No, 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 please stop. Africa has the highest prevalence of transsexual abuse, which is about 34.4%. Oh my god. 21 million girl child below the age of 19 has gotten pregnant and over 7,077 girls give birth every year. Sorry, I don't know why I'm getting me. I don't know what. I'm getting me. 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 Shall it please? I'm so nearly fifty-one million cases and ninety thousand deaths of malaria reported in our country every year. Twenty-five million people are at risk of facing hunger between June and August if urgent action is not taken. Depression as a major public health problem is prevalent in 4.4% in global population and 5.4% in African regions. This accounts for 322 million people depressed globally, including me. The Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is a word that came to Isaiah. Who shall I send? In your office, there are people. I don't know if you just heard that 100 million Nigerians have addiction problems. I don't know if you just heard that one out of every three girls in Nigeria will have been abused sexually. I don't know if you just heard that depression and suicide will become the leading cause of death in the next five years. It's number two right now higher than cancer, higher than malaria, depression and suicide will become the leading cause of it. And we have the answer! Are we going to keep quiet? Are we going to keep quiet and keep coupling? I come to church. I come every Sunday. Or we're going to be like, there is a world to save. There is a mission. Why do you think we do NLP UK? I don't know if you read the London Daily Times this week. And it was a publication about harvesters in London. And it said, a new church is setting the tide. The Archbishop of Canterbury, which is the highest um, minister in the UK, said he was, he was embarrassed to know under his tenure for the past 10 years, church attendance are plummeted to the lowest in the history of the UK. And they were wondering, how come someone can step to you and provoke a revival? And I said, because we're not going to allow such a score. We are going to go. I will go. You will go. You will go. God wants to send you. God wants to send you to those that are depressed. Some of your family members, they, they're going through this huge separation. God wants to send you there. Some of them have children problems. God wants to send you there. Some people are just confused. And they're looking for answers and Jesus has said I am the way and the truth and the life and no man can come to the father except by me 
It's not a pastor's job. It's everyone's job to make a difference in our world. How are we going to fold our hands and let people brag about prostitution yet we cannot post NLP on our social media? How are we going to fold our hands and you, you, you come to church just by yourself every Sunday and you are literally surrounded with people that they are all going to hell? He said, pulling them out of the fire. Let me show you some two scriptures and we'll close. See the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 in verse 29. I want us to read it together. 1 Corinthians chapter All the women stand. I want to read it. All the women stand and let's read it together. Just the women first. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 20. All the women stand. Let's read this together. Are you ready? Just the first line. One to go. I say, but that's it. He said the time is short. What is short? Satan knows the time is short, so there's an increase, amplified demonic activities all over the world. Because Satan knows his time is short. But not only Satan's time is short, you can have your sense. Should I tell you what else is short? Another time is short is your time and my time. Ladies and gentlemen, I can do an LP Monday to Friday right now. I can preach on the weekend and do a lot. But in the next 30 or 40 years time, I will not be able to have that physical energy to do these things. So Jesus Christ said, I must walk the walk of him while it is day. He said, the night, now that you are young, let the Lord send you. Now that you are young, let the Lord use you because the night is coming. <laughs> Having a note, either you want it or you hate it or you like it, your body just keeps getting older. There was a time you will walk one hour, but now you're like, I have back pains because the night is coming gradually. The night is coming, honey. The night is coming, sir. The night is coming when no man can walk. You're now 30, you're now 40, you're now 50, you have hit 60. The night is coming. When no man can work, the time is short, even for me. And the last one that the time is short is for the person that doesn't know Christ. There are people I always wished I'd spoken to, but if I could get back to them, they lost their life and they passed on. And that soul ended up in hell. You know, I read a challenge from an atheist. Uh, an atheist does not believe in God. An atheist said, the reason I don't believe in God is this. If I believe that there was heaven and hell, he said, I will come past the whole world to make sure nobody goes there to hell. He said, the way the Christians are lethargic about hell and heaven shows that they don't believe that it exists. You walk in the office, who will God send there? You. You stay in an estate, who will God send there you? All the contacts you have, what's the purpose if not for you to reach them? All the people you work with, what's the purpose? You know the thing, you never even try to say, let me talk to you about Christ. Let me share my testimony with you. Will you follow me to church? Try! Let them even refuse you first. He said, the time is short. The time. What you don't know is that behind that your boss is big tie. He has a depression that is eating him up and nobody can help. And God was putting in that office hoping you could talk to him. But because you are so carried away by Kobo, Naira, Yan, and Sidis, you have forgotten your calling. You are like Esther. You are enjoying the palace and you have forgotten you have come for such a time as this. And you keep laughing at the girl that saves everybody and you don't understand that that's your ministry. You don't understand that that girl is your ministry. The people you criticize, the reason why you feel the connection is because it is your ministry. Let me read one more scripture to you. Act chapter 13. My God. 
so when it brings fulfillment and meaning to living when you begin to win souls and make a difference it brings fulfillment and meaning to living number two he it sets people free and brings hope to them I, I will to god that god will anoint your eyes so that you see life through the lens of eternity i will not see life through the lens of just here Where, where's my file do you have my file for me Acts chapter 13 verse 25 thank you yeah just leave this with me some of you when you get to heaven when they want to talk about you the angels will bring out bundles of vows and talking about different exploits of faith done for the kingdom but some people want to say okay it's not for you to come joseph adebimbo you just come and they'll just open your file they will find one sheet he got born again 1977 october the second and just say, and what next and nothing sir and also say but you live for 50 more years and there'll be nothing to show for your long life that's why i sang the song i live for jesus day after day i live for jesus day after day the holy spirit i will obey i live for jesus day after day and either you know it or not one day it's not going to be party as regular the bible speaks of one day that the trumpet will sound it's an all of a sudden the dead in Christ will rise up first. He says, and we that are alive and remain in the faith shall be caught up together with the Lord. And in that day when you see the Lord, you will not remember you're an architect because that's a waste. You will not remember you're a doctor, that's a waste. You will not remember you're an accountant, that's a waste. All that will matter is what was done for Christ. And I said, sir, I was very busy with my children. And God says, really? My blessing became a distraction. He said, and, and, you know, and, and he says, sir, it was my job. And God looks at the angel, what kind of job is that? Because the only job we recognize here is winning souls. Let's read it. Acts chapter 13, verse 25. Do you have it? Acts chapter 13. Oh, wow. Actually, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Acts 13. Let me just find it myself. Oh, wow. Oh. Mm. Verse 36. 36. Act 13, 36. See what the Bible says. And let's close with this. Act 13, verse 36. Can we read together? Can we read together? Can we read? Is he okay? want to go by the will of God fell asleep laid onto his fathers you know what he was saying he said and David after he has served his generation it's this is your generation this is a challenge of a generation this is the generation you have to serve you cannot serve Noah's generation. It's gone. You cannot serve the generation that will come after it's gone. This is your generation. It has its peculiarity. Paul served this generation. Peter served this generation. John served this generation. The question is this. Will you put your name in the sand of time and serve your generation? How will I do this? look through your phone contacts are there two or three people i can start praying for every day first thing start praying number two on your social media start sharing share the church flyers share your own testimony of salvation number three invite them to church with you you can't talk to them bring them to the service we'll win them number four Every time you hear we are winning souls, make sure your money is there. If you cannot go, let your money go with those that are going.
Hallelujah. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Lord, anoint my eyes with eternity. Oh Lord, anoint my eyes with eternity. Lord, don't let me live a life that is empty. Let me live a life that has meaning. Let me live a life that has I will not regret in eternity. Go ahead and pray, Lord. Lord, help me serve my generation. I want you to pray, Lord. Help me serve my generation. I want you to pray. And Father, thank you for your word. I'm asking today that the work of grace will work in the hearts of everyone so much. It's a cause of radical expo that the burden and the passion for souls will rest upon us radically that we all believe in with eternity in view in jesus name we pray Amen. say with me say i live for jesus, I live for jesus. Day, after day. day after day the holy spirit, the holy spirit. I, will I will obey i live for jesus, live for jesus. Day, after day. day after day make it a decision when you're coming to church next Sunday, pull someone along. Tomorrow when you pray, pray for soul sinners. Love them, don't judge them. Praise God. God bless you, you can have your sins. Oh wow. Praise God. Hallelujah.